player 22 on uh, the Silver Run Forest map. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we're going to hop in the gator, and we're going to take a quick tour of the map. I'm going to show you where our new home location is going to be and our new logging location. Looks like I need to reset my head tracker. There we go. Um, yeah, so let's um, head on out and see the countryside. This map is gorgeous, and uh, I mentioned in the last episode that I spent a little bit of off-camera time doing this um but we're basically we are basically kind of in the southeastish part of the map um the town's in the southeast and we've we we haven't seen the whole town so we'll take a look at that too but we've spent the majority of our time in this area and then you know running up to the to the old sawmill here um so I was originally kind of thinking, you know, maybe we'll just keep going uh, with contiguous plots of land, but I went through and looked through here. This is not really a very good place, good place to log. It's um, it's kind of steep, and there's not a lot of timber there because you know, even though the property line goes all the way to here, it really in reality goes more like over to here. So there's just not a lot of stuff there. It's kind of rough terrain, not that good. Uh, of a land. Likewise, um, this is pretty hilly down in through here. It's pretty steep. Um, not too bad, maybe down here, but this this you know this part of the land doesn't really appeal to me a whole lot either. This piece of land here, however, isn't too bad. It does have an open field, which is not a bad thing because that either means a we could turn into a hay field later on, or b it just gives us more um, land to plant new trees when the time comes. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure what we're gonna do next is we're going to probably purchase 18. But let's go take a look at 19 and 18 um, as part of our little map tour here that we're gonna do today. Uh, all the trees are planted on the property here. It, it wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was gonna be in terms of how long that it took, but um, it's 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 really difficult. In fact, it's pretty much impossible once you get back into the to the brush and the vegetation to see where you planted the sapling. So I just did the best I could, and <laughs> it'll come up the way that it comes up. I got to thinking something that would be incredibly handy with that is the GPS mod, but the the uh, Volvo excavator doesn't allow you to to attach the GPS, which is unfortunate. Okay, so anyway. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'm going to bring up this map here. So, okay, yeah, off to the right, just to kind of show it to you real quick. There is some timber back here, of course, but there's not a lot along here. And then you get down into this the creek, which is a pain in the butt all by itself. And as soon as you get up on the other side, it doesn't go back as far as it looks like it does in, in terms of the border. So it, it's, it's kind of steep, but it's just not really ideal for logging. That's not to say we will never log over here, but it's definitely not a place that I want to start next. Now, there is another thing I've considered, and that is that we own the property where the iron mill is or the, uh, I'm sorry, the iron mine. So we own all this property. Tr the trees up here are, are going to be such a royal pain in the butt to try and log. I don't even think I'll attempt it. However, um, we could do some logging of the trees down below along the river. We're not going to get a ton, you know, doing that, but there, there are some trees down here. These are on a pretty steep hill. Um, but there's, there's actually a few trees along in here that we could grab. And since we already own the land at some point, we probably should do that since the trees are, you know, there for the taking, but I don't think here again, I want to do that next. I, I, I want to get back to, you know, some major production here. So anyway, this is the other property that's not too bad. Uh, it's not super steep. There's plenty of room on it but the thing that i don't like about it in you know from logging here and now logging i guess is that um it, it doesn't have a lot of trees on it it's pretty it's pretty open property 
which here again is not a problem for the future, but for here and now, it's going to make things a little more difficult to pull timber off of. This is a fairly steep field, but you could still, you know, make this a hay field if you wanted to. I'm not saying that's what I would actually do with it, but you could. Um, if if this property had a few more trees on it right now, I'd, I'd probably grab it, but it doesn't. You know, it's a uh, it's a little bit on the sparse side. So I think we're going to pass it up for now, but again, we might do something with it later on. What uh, I think we are going to do for a few different reasons, though, is I think we're going to purchase this property across the way here. So again, let's look at it on the map. Um, it is 18. So it's going to cost us $93,000. So it's under $100,000, which is a good thing. Um, it's not super steep. There's quite a bit of an open area across the creek to the east here, which is, you know, it isn't, again, ideal, but it's got two pretty dense uh, forests over in these two sections here. Um, so let's just go look at it. I'll show it to you. We'll go up the road and uh, take a look at it from this side first. Okay, so yeah, it's uh in fact, well yeah, that's the that's the actual end of the map, so but this is pretty flat. So the so the thing we could do is we could make this our landing up here since it's already nice and flat. Um and then just yard logs up to this location. You know, so we could use that to our advantage. Um and then, you know, the river's right down there. And there's a little bit of lumber, but Again, when we get over into these sections across the creek, then we have some pretty thick stands of timber, relatively speaking, anyways. So it's still kind of open through here, but then as we get into this little section, uh, it's pretty thick back in here, as you can see. And especially across the road down in through here. There's a lot of trees down in here. There's another advantage. Well, there's actually two more advantages to this place. Yeah, see, these trees are pretty fairly tightly packed. It's right behind the gas station. Uh, so, uh, and the Waffle House, for that matter. <laughs> so if we need to go have some waffles for lunch, uh, we can come here and eat. Uh, the Waffle House is also a sell point. The Waffle Hut, I should say. That's neat looking, man. Very cool. And then, of course, we have a, a fuel station and a little mini mart here that we can go get snacks and refuel our vehicles. So, that, so that's just, an, you know, that's definitely not a deciding factor, but it's a little added bonus to this area. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking we're going to do for our next login property is, is buy this, uh, this plot right up here that we just looked at. And... Um, I mean, it's even fairly nice and flat back in there, but it seems to me like it makes the most sense. Well, see, no, this is fairly open too. We could make we could make this area the the landing um, because it's a little more central, and it's right next to the road. Yeah, you know what? Maybe we will. Maybe we'll make this area the landing here. I think that's what we'll do. Okay, so yeah, that's the plan, guys, for our next property we're going to purchase for logging. Now, let's just take a look next at where I think I want to move to for our, our permanent home in this series. So what we do is we go across the river here, and you can see it gets really steep over uh, across the river on that side. And we get up into the sequoias up here, but... What I would do is, rather than go up that road there, we would probably cut a road here. We'd come in and then just run it along the creek here. And so just imagine that, you know, we have a road here and we come through here and then we get into this 
really neat looking, um, you know, redwood forest here. Now what I would do is I would, I would log all of the other trees, clear out the underbrush, but I would for the most part, I'm not going to promise anything, but for the most part I would try and leave the redwoods alone because they're not worth anything anyways. Um, you know, if you guys didn't already know this, the Giants made it so that if you cut down a redwood, you don't get crap for it. It's like almost as bad as the, as the deadwood because they're endangered trees and, you know, you're not supposed to cut them down. And then it comes right into this little kind of clearing area. And so I'm thinking we could turn this into like our yard, um, you know, for our equipment, put a nice shed in here. And then if we come up here a little further, we have a really cool lake with a nice view. And we could build our house right here on this point overlooking the lake. And then we have that really cool view over that way and over this way. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, guys, uh, for our permanent home. And then if we, if you go up that way, it goes up on top of that ridge, which then drops down on that, you know, it's a, that steep slope that goes back down to the river. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think but I'm liking it. It has a lot of potential. Now, if we keep going this way, um, there's another lake over here, which has got a pretty nice view too, really. And it's, you know, it's not, it's not super steep around here. It's relatively flat. We could definitely work with it. But we also have this little lake over here. So the, so the alternative spot that I had considered is we build our house kind of right up here on this on this point and then have that cool looking view off over that direction. Um, so so that's the alternative. I kind of, I don't know, I kind of like the other spot a little bit better than this one though. I think partly because there's just a lot of reeds and stuff so it has more of a swamp marsh type feel. Uh, whereas the other, the other one feels more like a, a mountain lake to me. Let's go back and look at it again. See, we have some reeds here, but this this has, to me anyways, has more of a high country, you know, high mountain lake type of feel to it. So, yeah. Okay, so let's go, let's keep looking around on the map here. Isn't this neat though, you guys? It's just, I don't know, it just really, whoops. It's such a nice map. The Giants have done a spectacular job of, of making this map. And uh, I, I didn't really realize how neat it was until <laughs> I started driving around and looking at it. And it's like, wow, this is really cool. Uh, so, yeah, as far as, like I said, as far as the redwoods go, I would do my best to, to work with them in place. But there's there probably will be a couple situations where we're just going to have to move one, uh, depending upon how we th set things up, you know. And we could even we could even make a rule to where if I cut down a redwood tree, then I have to plant a new one because uh, we can we can buy seedlings. Now this is another possible spot for you know we could put a nice house up here, a little higher up on the hill with the view of the pond. So this isn't bad either. Um, but I still I still like the other place better myself. Okay, cool. So if we keep going this direction. There's another pond down here, but this one, I didn't like this one much at all because it really has a kind of a marsh type feel to it. And it's, it's, it's got some deciduous trees around it too, so some elms and stuff. And it looks neat. It looks like a place you'd want to go duck hunting at, you know, that sort of thing. But I, it just doesn't appeal to me quite as much. In fact, Looks like we're in the water already, but we're in a gator, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, it's not the kind of place I think I would want to build our, our home, though. Though it's very picturesque. Definitely picturesque. Beautiful in, in its own right, for sure. Um, okay. So, that is almost certainly going to be the site of our future home here in... Uh, 
Silver Run Forest. And then if we come out this way, uh, it just comes back out to the highway and to the to the sawmill. And the further north we get, the more redwood you know type of forest area that we get into. And well, that's actually kind of the, that's the end of the map up there, anyhow. Uh, I don't think we can go much further than this. We should see the X's here any moment. Oh, maybe we can go. Oh, there they are. Okay. <laughs> I knew they were coming up fairly soon. Okay, so we're as far north as we can go on the map at this point. This is a really neat looking area through here too. It's like a park almost. Just gorgeous. And that's the that's the train that heads off to Elm Creek. Which I I get a kick out of because Elm Creek is I don't know this for sure, but I've heard that it's in Ohio. It's definitely somewhere in the Midwest, and we're way up in the Pacific Northwest, so why does that train go to Elm Creek specifically? <laughs> Unless it's a different Elm Creek. Maybe it's a different Elm Creek. I don't know. Okay, anyway, let's um, head up this way. So we have a nice little road, paved road that goes up into the Redwood Forest here at the north part of the map. And um, there is... I think... I think we want to drop down through here. Oh, look at that view. Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, that's underneath the bridge. Um, oh, no. Okay, that's the edge of the map there, too. Okay. So pretty. So this kind of follows the river along there, but I think, I think I actually want to get back up on the highway. Yeah, so let's head back up that way. Because there is a little pond up here that has a carving in it. And I believe it's a frog. How appropriate, a frog in a pond. Let me um, bring up... Yeah, it's just going to be right up the highway here a little bit further. Very pretty with the fall colors, too. My wife and I, you know, we uh, we live in Colorado. And one of the things we often will do this time of year is we'll take a drive up in the Rockies and see the aspens turn. So, yeah, if you... If you're driving by and you're paying attention and look out there, out on the lily pad, there's a frog carving. Of course, you can't tell it's a frog from here, but I went out and looked at it. There we go. You found the frog sculpture. Just 12 more to go. So, yeah, really neat, man. Neat little pond up against the rock cliff there. Okay. Hop back in here. And then, um, if you keep going this way, this just goes way up to a fire lookout uh, tower, I believe. Yeah, the lookout tower is up there. There, There's no uh, carving up there. I already looked when I went by. Oh, yeah, look at this. This is kind of neat. We go across this bridge right over a waterfall here. Way cool, man. And it has like a little gorge as it goes down through there. So the Pacific Northwest doesn't have redwoods. Um, you don't really get into those until you get into Northern California, which isn't considered part of the Pacific Northwest, though it is still part of the Cascade Range. Uh, well, no, that's probably the Sierra Nevada Range, now that I think about it. But um, we do have... Uh, on the west coast of Washington and Oregon, we do have really big cedar trees. So that would be, I, I think this, the big cedar trees are related to the sequoia. Not exactly the same species, but I think they are. Don't quote me on that, though. Maybe, maybe that's not true. Uh, but we do have some massive, massive cedar trees on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State. So it's not completely... Out of the, you know, uh, beyond the realm of possibility, well, I don't know if that's the right word, but it's not completely implausible that there would be redwoods here. 
I just kind of like to think of them more as big cedar trees, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And then that just kind of goes along the ridge, and then it ends up that direction. Well, actually, does it? No, we can get down from up here. So this has a has the feel of an actual logging road. Um, if you've ever, if, you know, if you've ever lived in a logging community, a logging area, and been, you know, taking rides on logging roads, like if you're hunting or just going out for a ride or whatever, um, they get like this. They're really steep. And, you know, they switch back on the mountain, so I think they did a pretty good job of make, giving this road that kind of a feel, even though it's pretty small. Alright, so that's where we came up there. Blech. I did check down in those culverts for a carving. I didn't see anything down there. Okay, hey, there's our iron mine across the way there, which is kind of a neat view of it. Uh, we'll head over there, and I'll kind of show you what I was thinking. Oh, you know what? I didn't. I don't think I looked down here for a carving. Oh, we got a little texture glitch or something going on there. Isn't that pretty? Oh man, I just love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Partly just because it reminds me of, of home, you know. It reminds me of Washington State. And uh, a lot of the places I spent my, my younger years. It's just neat. Love it. Okay, let's see. Where are we at? We are... Okay, so we're up here. We basically just kind of explored the, the northwest part of the map and as you can see it's very hilly there's not a lot to it not really ideal for logging in my opinion uh, but very picturesque for sure um you know what there's another tower up here we should go check that tower i don't think i went to that one let's go take a quick look see at it this is going to be right on up here you know one thing i've noticed about the carvings on this map is they're not they're not really necessarily hidden or you could say they're hiding in plain sight whereas on Elm Creek you know all the little toys and stuff those were hidden like they were in nooks and crannies and in caves and inside boxes uh, they weren't always real obvious as to where they were whereas the carvings they're kind of just out in the open you just have to know where <laughs> which is kind of neat I like it I like that they did it that way so like a little bench up here. You can sit down and have some lunch. All right, let's just run up here real quick and see if there is anything to see up here. Every tower I've checked so far, except for one exception, which we'll see later, has not had a carving in it. That doesn't mean... Yeah, there's no carving up here. That doesn't mean we won't find them, though. Uh, we did find one by going up into the tower and then looking. Okay. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I was just going to jump up on the rail so we could look around a little bit. Um, very cool, though, man. Love it. Love the view. Okay, well, it doesn't look like there's carving up here. So let's continue on. Hope you guys are enjoying this little map tour. A little something different. Just kind of see the... The cool scenery here. You know, it's one of those things where when I was driving around the other night looking at it, I figured, eh, let's go go for a little ride and just check things out for a few minutes. You know, like three hours later, right? <laughs> it was that cool, man. Okay. We're going to go down uh, over to our iron mine. And I think... Let me look at the map again for a second. Yeah, there's another gas station here, and this is just a highway that kind of goes through here. I've looked, I pretty much looked at all of the land on this entire map, you know, for logging. And this property here is not too bad, but it's it's steep is the thing. Um, this property here looks good on the map, but it's, it's a mountain. So it's a big, tall mountain with steep sides, so it's not as good as it looks. 
I think, uh, you know, some of this stuff down here is, is a little bit better, but it's still not as flat as you might think. Um, so, you know, I never really found a place that is like, this is the absolute, utter, perfect place um, to log. And that's primarily because of the terrain, but it's very true to life, though. I mean, when you're in the mountains, you're not going to have a lot of flat area, so it makes sense, you know? And anybody working in the logging profession knows that uh, <laughs> you're not usually going to be working on flat ground. Anyway, so, okay, let's pop down here. And then we'll go down to this bridge and cross over, and then we'll actually be on our property. There's something else really cool I want to show you, too. Um, it was like, when I found this this place, I was thinking, oh, we've got to find a carving in here, and I never did. I was very surprised that we didn't. Okay, so this is our land here. That's the, the mine up that way. And... You know, there's a bit of a flat area here with some timber on it. There's even some oak trees and things. Uh, you know, there's an elm tree right there and stuff. And it goes back here. I mean, it, it's really pretty, actually. It's, again, it's kind of like a park back here. And then there's a tunnel, but you can't go in the tunnel. It's blocked off. There's an invisible wall there. And then, you know, this is the slope that goes up to the mine uh, and it does have timber on it we could certainly cut the timber and yard it downhill that would not be that difficult to do and then there's also this little section down here which we could log all of this we own all of this property here but this is what I I found so it's another tunnel and you can go through it check this out isn't this neat and I'm thinking oh man we're definitely gonna find a carving in here but yeah there's no carving back here at least not that I could find if it is it's well hidden but you'd think right that they would have put a carving in that tunnel and then it kind of comes out along the river here and then up the hill towards the mine I never actually went all the way down through here. I don't think I can get the, the gator through that tunnel. Let's just run the tracks here for a second. At least down to the bridge. Yeah, okay, and that goes up to the mine there. Let's take a peek underneath the bridge, because you never know. But, like I said, it seems like the carvings are hidden in plain sight on this map. And so, now that I kind of am starting to realize that, it's not likely we're going to find a carving in a, a nook and cranny type of place. Okay. I'll just look underneath here real quick. Very cool. All right. Let's head back to the gator and drive up to the mine. So, uh, yeah, this is optional for for logging if we if we want to come over here and do some logging, but it's not ideal. The terrain train makes it not an ideal logging operation, as the thing. So, I think what I'm, we're, we're going to do is we're going to buy that property that we looked at earlier, and <clears throat> you know get get a full scale logging operation going. Like we had, I mean, it, that, that first property that we picked was not bad. Um, I, I felt like we were pretty successful. I mean, I don't know. I haven't really paid much attention, but we've made several million dollars. Well, maybe not several million, but probably one to two, two maybe up to three million dollars-ish so far. But we've bought some pretty expensive stuff, too. So look at that waterfall. Isn't that neat? Very cool. Okay, let's head up to the mine. I want to see where we're at with our metal. We should have a few more pallets of metal. Um, what was I going to say? I think I had told you guys that I was going to take 
our wood chips and dump them up at the iron mine. I decided not to do that. I decided just to sell them um, because that's when I had decided that we're going to use the paper mill. And you know what? You should... It's very surprising to me that you can't put take wood chips to a paper mill. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> Why couldn't you do that? Unless there's something about the process that I don't understand. I don't know. You'd think that they would prefer wood chips as opposed to full logs. Oh, yeah. Look at all that metal, dudes. Dudes and dudettes. Very nice. We need to load that up and get it down to the to the um, uh, roller coaster. I want to get the roller coaster for, done first, and then we can start selling this and making some pretty decent bank off of it. Let's take a look at... Oh, I haven't looked at the sales either. Ooh, there's another Mack truck for sale. Uh, it's got 34 months on it, though. It's pretty old. What about this tractor? This is a 295, also very old tractor. Yeah, the, it would be nice to have a second truck, but I don't think we're quite at the point yet where I want a second truck because we have some other really big ticket machinery items that that I want to purchase first, like a bigger front loader, for example, um, which might be the very next thing we purchase, as a matter of fact. Okay, so our metal, oh yeah, look at that, we, we're, we're like completely full there. Um, and then it's, how many liters are in a single pallet? It's a thousand pieces, so is this a piece count, this 380? I'm going to say maybe that's what it... No, it's it's liters, 345 liters. Okay. I don't know off the top of my head how to convert 1.3 tons into liters. I'd have to Google that, but anyway. We definitely don't have another pallet ready yet. Let's jump into here. Whoops. And just top it off. Now, one of the reasons reasons I'm thinking about getting a, a big front loader or wheel loader I should say next is so that we can use that bigger bucket to load things here however we're gonna try um, in a, an upcoming episode here fairly soon we're gonna see if we can get a conveyor system to work at the very least one that can load into that you know that big man, man we got a big pile up here already I wonder if this gets to a point where it stops growing if you don't keep, uh, you know, keep scooping it. Huh. Anyway, um, so yeah, big wheel loader so that we can get, scoop larger, you know, bucket loads of this stuff, but also it'll help, you know, us with loading logs too, because the wheel loader we have, of course, is this, that little one. It's actually done quite a good job for us, but... Um, we need something bigger. Okay, well, I guess that's it for up here. So we're gonna go, we're gonna start heading south. And we're gonna go to another fire lookout tower where I know another carving is. And then just look at a few more things before we wrap up this episode. Whoa. All right, let's get down here. I believe if you go that way, it just gets to the to the west end of the map because we are pretty close to. Yeah, it it just stops right there, so there's not a whole lot to see there. What's this? Oh, that's like a little house. Um, I kind of liked, if I recall correctly, I kind of liked this area here too. So why don't we go along the river and then we'll turn off and kind of go up this way because this is where we're actually headed. Yeah, okay. So yeah, the, the northwest part of the map is pretty pretty mountainous. Uh, we were going to go this way, right? Yeah. Lots of cliffs and stuff, so... Um, we could... We could just kind of cut up through here, I suppose. 
So again, this this property here has um, a decent amount of timber on it, but it's fairly hilly. It's not terribly hilly though. It does get pretty steep right here. Yeah, so that's the top of the mountain there. And this is another lookout tower. And when I drove up here, I actually came up that road. And as soon as I drove up here, I looked in the shed and look what's here. It looks like a dog. You found the dog sculpture. 11 more to go. Fantastic, man. Okay. So we just added another $100,000 to our, our wallet just in this episode alone. There's nothing up in that tower. I already looked. And we got kind of a cute little pond down here. And, um, yeah, th this side of the property is not, it is a little better than the other side in terms of just how steep it is. Okay. Another pond there. Is that something sitting out on that rock? No, I don't think though. I think so. I think that's just a rock sitting out on that rock. From up there, it kind of looked like almost like a little platform that something was sitting on top of. You can see a view of the big river out there. Super cool. There's a carving. I had no idea this was there. <laughs> I was just running along and I saw the wood out of the corner of my eye. How neat. Honestly, guys, I, 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 I was going after that thing. I had no idea this was here. Okay, what is this? This is like a woodpecker, maybe? Kingfisher. All right. A Kingfisher sculpture. Fantastic. We are now up to $475,000. Beautiful. I did not know that was there. Okay. So now we all know. That's cool, man. Um, and again, you, you can kind of see what I mean by hiding in plain sight. I mean, these things are just out in the open. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's a bit of a landing here. It's already kind of put together for logging. And let's bring up the map here again. Okay, so I went, uh, I kind of drove through this area here too. If we bring this up, that's, uh, yeah, that is an expensive piece of land. Man, look at that, almost $300,000 for, for this chunk, this 24 chunk. And then 25 is 348,000, so very expensive land. Now this park down in here, um, is a little, I think it's a little flatter. So there's some pretty good logging down in there. Um, this is kind of on a steep hillside, but then it opens up into this pretty wide grassland up through here. The thing about it though, is that depending upon how quickly the trees that we plant grow at some point, we're going to, we're going to be able to cycle back through our previous property and, and re-harvest the trees. And, you know, once we start harvesting the trees that we've planted, in terms of just making money anyways, we're going to make a lot more money off of those trees because we're not going to have to deal with dead trees. We're not going to have to deal with spruce trees, which, unfortunately, we talked about this in the last episode, aren't worth as much uh, as the pines. And uh, yeah, we're gonna make a heck of a lot more money. So from a business standpoint or a money-making standpoint, I guess, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense for us to keep buying up property and harvesting the wild trees. That doesn't mean we're not gonna do that though. Um, you know, we'll probably still do it just to do it and, and for funsies and, and just to get some cool property, but um, yeah. 
so I don't know. It, it, it really just depends, like I said, on how long it takes for the, the new trees to grow. Um, I think it's like anywhere from two to three in-game years, or at least it used to be that way. I don't know if the Giants changed that or not. Look at this view, you guys. Nice. Now we're on a big river here. There's a boat out on the river. So cool. So somebody who's living in a farmhouse, and they even have an arable field out here, which looks like it's probably got soybeans in it. Yeah, those are soybeans. But aside from maybe doing some grass to raise some sheep, which is needed for one of the productions, I'm not really, you know, planning on doing farming in this series because we're like full-blown farming on the other series. Kind of neat back in here, though. There's a little island out there. You know, uh, I would not be surprised in the least if there's a carving down on that island. Because that's what islands are for, right? Carvings? Let's swim out there and see. Well, uh, assuming we can get out there. Maybe we can't. Yeah, it looks like we can. These are interesting looking plants. Well, if there is a, a carving down this island, it's gonna be really difficult to see with all the the brush and stuff. We could get into the build menu and fly around, but that'd be that'd be kind of cheating, I think. dead tree in the water there. That's cool looking. Let's just walk over here real quick. Maybe take a quick look-see under the bridge. Just scanning over there for a possible carving. Not really seeing anything. There's the train trestle. That's kind of neat how they have the the brush all up bunched up against there. Okay, well, I'm not seeing a carving over here. Let's go look on this island here. There's even a little bit of timber on this island, but you can't buy the, the islands. They're not for sale, so we wouldn't be able to log this even if we wanted to, which we wouldn't. Not really much point. Okay. We got up on this rock. Seems to find a lot of carvings on rocks. Not seeing anything, though. All right, well, let's go ahead and head on into town. I have a feeling like this is going to be another one of those really long episodes, but <laughs> we're just going to keep going. I hope you guys don't mind. You know, the thing is, is most of us uh, content creators on YouTube, at least, you know, for Let's Play Gaming, we try and keep, uh, uh, well, I shouldn't say we because I'm terrible at it, but... You know, 30 minutes is about the average length of a of a Let's Play video. I I tend to go over that a bit, and some people um, make them shorter. You know, around 20 minutes. But what I was what I'm getting at is, I don't think I've ever remember anybody commenting on one of my videos saying it was too long. Um. So. You guys who, you know, have been watching the channel for a long time, and thank you for that, by the way, too. Uh, you don't seem to mind when I make the longer videos. Uh, that being said, though, I mean, I, I want 
I want the channel to appeal to as wide of an audience as possible so it'll grow, so I, I can't go crazy with that either. But all that's to say, I'm looking for carvings as I'm yapping here. All that to say, I, I can't remember off the top of my head anyways, anybody ever saying, hey, that video was too long. You need to shorten it up. <laughs> so, oh, you know what? I wonder if there's, I wonder if there's a carving on top of the bridge. What do you guys think? Oh, okay. I just about jumped too high. This would be the place for them to put a carving. <laughs> Um, if there was a carving on one of the other arches, we wouldn't be able to see it from here anyways. I think it would be out of render distance. Um, I'm not spotting it. Here. We gotta check, though. Hopefully I don't jump off the edge here. Oh, man. Giants, why didn't you put one up on top of the, one of these bridges? That would've been perfect. Now, I think if there was one up there, we'd be able to see it, and I'm not seeing it. So, it was a great idea, though, right? <laughs> oh, man. That would have been perfect. Okay, anyway. Let's go take a quick look, uh, quick look at the town. Um, we didn't really explore the center of the map too much, but... There's, uh... I mean, there's... Not really anything super noteworthy in the center of the map, other than it's got some fairly decent logging. I mean, this is a mountain here. Um, let's see where, yeah, this is like a really steep grassy area, but some of these spots up here aren't too bad. In fact, this is where the player starts, and this is all nice and flat down in here. We actually own that land. No, we didn't own that land. No, I take that back. I think we own, well, did we? Hold on a sec. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. If we go here, what did we start with? I think we started with 32, 33, and 36. So yeah, we did own this land. And this is actually very flat down there, but I needed to sell it at the time to get everything started the way that I wanted to start it. So no regrets, but we can always buy it again later if we you know, ever decide to do so. Okay, let's take a quick look at the town, and um, then we'll probably need to wrap things up. So this is the uh, this is a big grass field here that's purchasable, and there's um, I thought there was yeah I think there's one across the way there too yeah there is, and then that's an arable field out there it looks like it's got sugar beets on it maybe, and then there's another arable field that doesn't have anything on it right over around here. And then we come to the main sawmill. We've actually been here because this is where we got the, the big forklift. So this sawmill is not purchasable, um, but we can sell to it, right? So it does have a sell point. Um, the purchasable sawmill is the old sawmill, which is the one up north, which we are gonna get. Uh, I have not actually looked around here for carvings. What are the chances that uh, there'd be a carving up here? Oh, I can't get through there. Can we get through here? Uh, probably not. If, it, if it's that difficult to move through here, I don't think they would have put a carving up here. Because Yeah, see, it doesn't even let me go any further than that. Okay, well, that was a nice idea anyway. What about up here? Um, I'm running into an invisible wall or something. I can't move from here. What about down here? Nope. Invisible wall. Okay, no carvings then. Okay. There's the roller coaster, of course. Now, uh, that's the boathouse. We've already looked at those. We took a look at those, um, in an earlier episode. You know, maybe we did actually come through here and look around... Now that I think about it, probably when maybe we came to get the forklift. So once we get whoa, going more on production, 
uh, we'll start delivering stuff here to the uh, to the roller coaster, uh, and that's the drop-off point there. This is the farmer's market here. Uh, so this is one of the places we can sell our, our paper to. And then this is the store that we've been to many times already. And then if we go over this way, there's a cafe there that just gets back out on the highway again. What is this? Silver Run Forest. Little nice sign uh, as you come into the town. I haven't really looked around the town in detail. Some nice houses along the river there. We got some kind of a production here. What is it? It is barrel making. Okay, so yeah, it's a barrel making factory. And there's a dock out there. That kind of feels like maybe carving. <laughs> Might need to go take a look out there. Smitty's Peak View Lodge. That must be like a fish house because it's got crabs and shrimp and stuff. Silver Run Savings, that's the bank. Betty's Hair Salon. See, the, the town is just more detailed and it seems like it has more life in it than it does in Elm Creek. Okay, this is a cell point of some sort. What is this? Doris's Dresser. Okay, so probably like a tailor shop that I'm guessing. And a bunch of other shops across the way there. Let's drive out onto the pier. Oops. Alright, we're going to take a quick look. around here to see if we can find another carving. This is really neat though. We can't go inside of there. It'd be neat if we could take the boats out. There's got to be a carving out here, man. You would think so, huh? Maybe one sitting in a boat. No, I guess not. I guess not. All right, well, it was worth a look. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. Just kind of looking down on the beach there, see if I can spot anything. Johnny's, or no, John's Fishing Supplies. Very nice. Got some more homes off to the right there. And this is the other thing I wanted to show you guys. This is, um, a, I think that's a wood turning production there. Most likely we'll e eventually either buy all of these or we'll put our own in. Yeah, lathe wood turning workshop. Okay. Now this production you can also bring 
raw wood directly to. Um, so it might, because of that reason, it might actually be the second thing that we'll buy. What is this over here? Thrift me. Oh, second hand shop. Okay, it's got a, it's got an unloads thingy. So I guess they'll buy certain things. All right, so if you guys have been watching from episode one, you'll remember I did a little role-playing thing where the mayor told us that, that's the fire department, the mayor told us that um, all these statues had been stolen from the local Native American museum, and he wanted us to find them, and he'd give us $50,000 a reward. Now... Believe me or not, doesn't matter, but it's God's honest truth. I had no idea <laughs> about this gallery. I just made that up because it seemed like a plausible reason for for the deal, right? Well, this is actually the museum. It's not a Native American museum. It's called the Great Woods Gallery, but this is the museum where all these carvings were t stolen from. <laughs> and everyone we've found so far then turns back you know turns back up here because you know we've returned them and they've given us the reward so these are all of the carvings that we found so far on the map which is really cool and again i had no <laughs> i had no idea this place was here um when i first started playing this and i made all that little role play thingy up about the native american carvings being sold so that's neat not exactly the same thing but kind of you know i was kind of along uh, on the right track there with it so um yeah, we found, um, have we found half the carvings now? Pretty darn close, I think. So it'll be fun to keep, you know, keep looking for those. I'm, I've really been enjoying that part of the, uh, of this playthrough. And not just because of the money, but trust me, I like the money too. <laughs> That's good money, man. That is really good money. We got a church here? Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know... I don't know if there are any more productions down through here. This just, yeah, there is. Okay, there's a, a framing, uh, Basinger framing place. And what's this? This is Briggs Shingle Company. Okay, yeah, so that's the shingle factory. That's one a production we can buy. And uh, there's something else over here. Oh yeah, that's the barrel plant. We've already been through here. It's just a neat town. Very well done. This whole map. I know I keep saying that. You guys probably think I'm a broken record, but this whole map, is, they've just done such a fantastic job of it. Um, and uh, I love it, man. I absolutely love it. Okay. Guys, um, we, we need to wrap this episode up. Uh, we didn't, like I said, we didn't really take a look at the central part of the map, but we'll probably at some point or another uh, get over there um, as we continue this playthrough uh, but I think we've seen the most significant parts of the map uh, and we've seen the parts that that I really like the basically the the northeast area with the redwoods and where I'm planning on purchasing our next logging property and our home property as time goes on so I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode if uh, nothing else changes between now and then when we start the next episode we will be purchasing that property um, that I showed you uh, more precisely this property here uh, so we're gonna buy 18 and I'm gonna work on moving my stuff fact you know what let's just do it right now there it's been done <laughs> <laughs> so we now own 18. Uh, so what I'm going to do is off camera, I'm going to work on moving my stuff over there and, you know, getting set up uh, to start our next big logging operation. And once uh, I, we're at, at the point uh, where we can start that, then I'll bring you guys back at that point. Okay. Uh, we still have $381,906 even after buying that property. So you know what? I'm going to do one more big purchase before I let you guys go, just so you know that I have it. We are going to go... <clears throat> or actually, we're going to save the game first. Always a good idea to save the game first before you make a big purchase. Um, we're going to go into here. We're going to go to wheel loaders, because it seems to me like a wheel loader is the, makes the most sense for the next thing that we should get. Um, and 
we're going to go big or go home. We're going to get the big boy. Um, we, and we can pay cash for it and still have a decent amount of money left over. Um, so let's bring this up. Uh, we want a safety frame on it. We want a safety beacon. What's the design change here? Either on the top or on the side. Yeah, let's keep it up on the top. Um, we, we want our old guy license plate. So we want to type two. And put that on front and back. Okay. What a big machine. We're going to be able to do some nice work with this thing, though, uh, including using that bigger bucket to more quickly load the iron ore. Uh, and we'll be able to... Here's the other thing we can do with this, too. Um, here, let's buy it. Yeah, that leaves us $74,000. Now, um, this thing is big enough for us to pick up a container that's loaded with logs. I could not do that with the the little wheel loader we've been using. I could pick up an empty container, or I'm sorry, not the wheel loader, the um, uh, the forklift. So what that means is we could actually potentially purchase several containers and then just lay them out on the ground, um, and you know, and and load them up, and then this should be able to load them when they're full. Okay, so big big purchase there. Now let's go here and let's go to wheel loader tools, and um, we already have the big bucket, so I don't need to buy that. But we want to buy the forks, and uh, we already have the big claw, so we don't need that. Some of these are mods here. Yeah, I think that's really probably all we need. We need the forks. Oh, wait, these are, what's the difference between these forks and the other ones? Those are Volvo forks. They're $3,000. What were these? Oh, you know what? These are forks for the other front loader, the one, the BM, the one we currently have. Well, you know, it's not, not necessarily bad to have those either, but these, these are actually the ones we need to buy. Okay, so let's do that. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. There's the, the L180H. And then just the pallet fork. What's the difference? Did we just buy the L180H? Yes. Okay, so we... Right, okay. Now I'm understanding what's going on here. I'm thinking that these are all universal, but apparently they're not. So this probably goes with the smaller wheel loader. So we definitely want the L180H. There we go. Now, one other thing I was thinking. Um, I wonder if we could put this bag loader to use. Uh, as you guys know, I use a, a bag loader on my telehandler in the farming series, and it's super useful. Why don't we lease this? And just try it and see, you know, what we can do with it. It might be, you know, it might turn out to be super handy or it might be completely worthless for us. Only one way to find out, right? Okay, so. Uh, I hope I can get the bucket, which I think is this one, on the big loader, the 3,000 liter bucket. The reason why I'm not 100% positive is because there's also one specifically for the L180H. I'll bet you we need this and not the other one. Let's try it, and if it doesn't work, of course, then we'll have to swap those out. Those are those big bag arm thingies, too. Okay, there we go. All right. So we still have $69,724, plenty of money for operating cash. And with that, guys, I'm going to leave you here. And if all goes according to plan, when I bring you back in the next episode, we will be on our new property, property 18, and ready to start doing some more logging.
guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye bye.